You want to show extra information in your bar chart. For example, the percentage growth rate or the change in rank. Well, with custom labels, you can do that. And these labels you can position on the left hand side, in the middle, on the right, or even outside of the bars. But what I'm going to show you in this video is how to show that extra information in between the axis labels and the bars themselves, like this. Now let's see how to set it up. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now here we have a bar chart, which we are going to use as a starting point. And you might remember it from my previous video, in which I showed you how to set up pagination, which is super helpful if you have a long list of items, to take these items and divide them over multiple pages. Now the video, you can check out over here. Now what I want to do is take what we have here and add extra information between the axis label and the bars itself, so that it looks like this. Now it shows the ranking and it shows the change in the rank from one year to the other one. Now the question is, well, how can we set up the label in such a way so that it shows in between the label of the axis and the bar itself? At the moment, it just shows the sales amount per item. And here we are looking at car dealers. All right. Now, what we did in that previous video is we showed the ranking at the beginning of each bar, but still inside of it. Now, let's take that as a starting point and then extend further on that. All right. So the trick is as follows, that we go here to the visualization then formatting options. And then if we go to the data labels, you see we have data labels and total labels. Now at the moment, it just shows, well, the value of the total sales, the data labels. But what I want to have is an extra label, which is total labels, but it's grayed out. And it's grayed out because there's not an extra series. So what we could do is create that extra series, a dummy. All right, and that is also important for the next step, in the trick. Now, that dummy measure I've already set up over here. And if you look in the formula bar, it is just equal to zero. Now, that measure we can add on the x axis. So I'm going to go back to the builds panel, x axis, add the data, and look for my dummy measure. There it is. All right. Nothing big changed. The only thing that might happen is that legend shows up that you then have to turn off. All right, I already turned it off, right? Otherwise it, look, it would look like this. And you might have to play around with the colors uh, because now there's an extra dummy measure in there. And usually I just put it to white. Doesn't really make a difference for now. And here the total sales, I'm just making sure that I have the color that I want, dark blue. Okay, now what's the point? Because with this in place, you can now see total labels. It's not grayed out anymore. We can turn the total labels on. Now, of course, we have now two labels. We have the normal labels and we have the total labels, which is just, well, the dummy value plus the total sales value. Now, the nice thing is that we now can use the data labels for different purposes. Now, for example, to show the ranking. So I'm going to go over here to the data labels, total sales, that's the measure, the series for which I want to change the labels. Then I scroll down a little bit. Here we can change the position, we can say, for example, inside base, so that's on the left hand side, but I don't want to show the sales amount, I want to show something else. And therefore, we have custom labels. Now, here we just have to say, what is then that measure that you want to show on the labels? So I'm going to click on it, go to sales, and here I already have a measure set up, ranking label, which I'll show you in a second, and you see, it gives me the ranking. All right, now let's have a quick look at that measure, so I'm going to go back here to the data panel, and here we have the ranking label measure, which is just taking a pound symbol and adding the rank for the current year, and the rank for the current year is calculated with a rank x function. Now, all of the details you find in that other video. Okay, now, now that we have this, well, it shows the ranking, that extra information inside of the bars on the left hand side. So this is already one way in which we can show extra information beyond just the series values, okay? And to have it split from one another and not just inside of one label, because it could also uh, create a label that shows the value and the ranking, but then everything would show uh, together. And I want to have it in different places. Now, 
How does this relate then to the next part of the trick, where we can take that information and put it in between the label of the y-axis, you on the left-hand side, and the bars themselves. But what we need to do then is play around with that dummy value. All right, so I'm going to go back over here to that dummy measure. And here, instead of having zero, let's put this to two million. And you see that the bar chart changed a bit. Now what's going on? First of all, the bars seem to have become smaller. And the labels for the totals, well, they are now far away from the actual bars. And that is because if we go here to formatting, bars, colors, you see, the dummy is in white. And let's make this maybe gray for the moment so that you see it a little bit. Ah, you see, we have some extra space in between. Now that space is on the right, but I want to have it actually on the left. Right, so I go back over here to the builds panel, take the dummy, and the dummy has to be first, and then only the total sales. Okay, so then I have it on the left hand side. So we have a placeholder, and then we can play around with the label for the dummy, for the placeholder, to show whatever we like. Now, before we do that though, we have to fix something because the total labels now add the 7 million from total sales to the 2 million of the dummy and the total then doesn't make sense anymore. So we have to revert back the labels as we had it before. So I'm going to go here to formatting. I don't want to have the total labels because they don't make sense anymore. And then for the data labels, instead of the custom label, I'm going to turn that off. I want to have the normal total sales values and I'm going to put them, well, over here inside and. Okay. So and now we can say that we want to show the ranking in between. And that is then for that dummy series. So I take the dummy series, then scroll down a little bit, turn custom labels on, add the data, sales, and then here we have the ranking label. Okay, now you see, there we have the ranking label. Maybe you want to change the color. And so over here we have the values, which we could show maybe in dark gray. And then we have the light gray background. Looks quite all right for now. All right, now that starts to look better. However, it's kind of clear huh, that this is a stacked bar chart to which some trick was applied. And it might actually be confusing that it is now connected. So what we also need to do is we need to make sure that we set the background. Well, that is just the bar color for the dummy back to white. All right. And to make it, well, less random how that number floats there in the middle, what we can do is go to data labels. And then here, there we do want to have a background. So there we can turn the background on and then make it light gray, just like this, or maybe play around with the transparency bit. So that looks exactly the way you want it to be. Okay, so that is already moving into the right direction, but of course we can show more information on the labels and we can still make it look a little bit better and make it even more informative. So let's do exactly that. First of all, I would like to change what shows on the labels. Now, maybe it would also be nice to show the change. Now, at the moment, we just show the ranking number, but I also want to have the change. So I'm going to go over here and add a new measure that does exactly that. Now, what is important is, well, there are already a few measures set up like item rank current year, item rank previous year, right? That is already there. And I'm going to refer back to that to calculate the change, right? So let's call this measure ranking development label. All right, and this is going to be equal to, now let's make use of variables. The first one is going to be the item rank change, which is equal to, well, over here we have item rank current year, previous year. I can just refer to these measures. So here we have item rank current year minus item rank previous year. Okay, now then the next part. Now this is where we say what needs to show on the label. So let's call it label. And here we could use a switch function. Now let's go for switch. Now what do we want to check? We want to check a few conditions. So let's start with true and then go condition by condition. Now every time we can refer back to item rank change. So we want to check the item rank change is equal to zero. 
what needs to show in that case? Well, that's going to be that second part, value one, result one. Now, if the item ranking is zero, then I want to show the ranking. So I'm going to have a pound symbol. I'm going to combine that with the ranking of the current year. So item rank current year. Now, and I would like to have a nice symbol right after it. So first of all, maybe a space and then the symbol, the indicator, which you could either Google or Winnerski dot. And then here you can search for one. You can look for, well, over here, we have all different kinds of icons. One that I recently used, this one, is just kind of like a hyphen, but a little bit wider. So I'm gonna go for that one, all right? And it needs to be also in between quotation marks. Good, and just like this, we can continue with the next one and the next one. Now, to be a little bit quicker, I'm going to select that line, Alt-Shift, and then down, down, so that we have it three times. Now for the next one, we can say bigger than zero. And for the last one, we're going to have smaller than zero. Now this part stays the same. The only thing that I would like to change is that it shows a different icon. So over here, I would like to have a different icon. So let's look for an arrow up. And also here, I recently looked for it. So that is this one. Okay. And this we want to uh, followed by the rank change. So the item rank change here at the top. So another ampersand, item rank change. And the same thing we can do for the next one over here. So I'm just going to copy that over without that last, last comment there at the end. And now if the item rank change was positive, so meaning it basically went down in the list, I actually want to have a downward pointing arrow there. It's a little bit counterintuitive, huh? but if the ranking gets last, so you go from five to one, well, we say, well, you went up in the list, right? So we went four up then in that case. So I'm gonna go over here for a download arrow. Okay, now, and that's it. We can close that switch function and then say return, and then here, label. Now, I forgot one thing, and that is if the item rank change is negative, then you probably don't want to show that minus sign. So I'm just gonna make sure that this item rank change then shows well, without the minus sign, is always positive. So with the absolute function, we can do that. Okay, so we have the ranking development label. And that label, we're going to show on that placeholder over here. So let's go back to the visual and then formatting options, data labels, make sure that the dummy is selected. And then here we change the ranking label with the new one. So that is the ranking development label. Okay, and you see for number one, there was no change. It was number one previous year as well. And then here for Ride, Revive, Repair, the second one, well, it actually went up in the list. So meaning it went from position five last year to number two this year. So that is three up. Now, we probably have to work a little bit on the colors and also the spaces. Now, the easy one is the colors. Let's start with that one first. So I'm gonna go over here back to the measure, select the measure that we already wrote, so that is the ranking development label. And I'm just gonna copy it and use it for the next one as well, because with that one, we can also set up the conditional formatting because when it went up, then I want to show it in green. Otherwise, when it went down in red, and if it didn't move in gray. So the part that we need to change is what we return for each situation. So for the first one, I want to have gray. For the next one, well then, oh, Got the comma there at the end. So for the next one, we want it to be red. And for the last one, we want it to be green. Now, of course, we also don't want to call it that label uh, because now this refers to color. And if you do Control Shift L, and when label selected, it selects in your code everything with label. And then you can just type in color and it gets changed in all places. Okay, so now that we have that, we just have to apply it to conditional formatting for the dummy labels. So I'm going to the visual again, then formatting options. Then here we go to data labels, make sure that the dummy series is selected. And then here we want to use that measure for conditional formatting of the font color for the dummy labels. So FX, format style, field value. And then here from the second drop down, we choose ranking development color measure and click okay. You see, we have now red, green, and gray. Works perfectly, nice. Another problem though, or another thing that could be a little bit better is the spacing in between the numbers 
and the change, I would like it to be a little bit more. So let's go back and just make that last adjustment. So over here, we're going to go back to the label for the ranking development. And I want to have a little bit of extra space. Now, here you see, we add already one space. And if I would make this more, then let's see what happens. Nothing. Nothing happens. Okay, that, that's not great. And that is because the additional extra spaces get automatically removed. Now, how would I do this? Well, we have a small workaround. So what I usually would do is I create another variable and let's call this one extra space. Okay, and here let's put in for now just a normal space. Okay, and then here where we want to add it, there we can, let me just do it like before, select this, Control Shift L, okay. There I want to have extra space. I want to refer to that variable called extra space. Oops, extra space. Now I have to watch out because I also changed it up here. That of course needs to be back to a normal space again. And oh, there is also an A missing, extra space. Okay, now it should work. Now, still it doesn't fix the problem because any extra space that I would add here will still get removed by Power BI. But what does not get removed is icons that look like spaces, but are not a space really. Now, let me show you what I mean. You can just Google it or go to a website that's called emptycharacter.com. Now, you see, we can just copy it from here or here, and I'm just gonna copy that space, go back to Power BI, and here I'm just going to replace this, the normal space, with whatever I just copied there. Now, we just need to repeat it a few times. So we wrap this inside of a wrapped function, and we say we want to repeat it, let's say five times, and now we should see some additional space being created between the ranking number and the icon or the change of the ranking. That works, perfect. Now, one more thing that you might want to consider is to make the space for the information label dynamic, meaning you have to go back to the dummy measure and then, for example, look for the overall maximum and then divide it by a certain number. Here, for example, I chose five. And you could also make the ending point for the x-axis also dynamic. All right, so that's it. That is the whole solution. That is how you can create a placeholder on which you show extra information. And with the custom labels, we can show whatever we want. Now combine this with also a little bit of conditional formatting and it just looks awesome. All right, now let me know your thoughts, put them in the comment section below. And of course, good design is not just about small tips and tricks that lead to prettier visualizations. Much more is involved to create a good Power BI report. Now, if you wanna know my process, how I approach every new Power BI report from beginning, to the end and all of my secrets, well, I share them in the Power BI Design Transformation Program, which is starting in a couple of weeks from now. And of course, in the meantime, between now and then, you might want to see these videos over here. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.